can chat and anyways. Should totally um, do it. First time I, I had you on the show, uh, you were just really launching the Chris Ducker brand, uh, your site, and you were just getting that going. Second time I had you on, you were launching now bestseller virtual freedom. And here you are again, you know, so I was like, I was thinking to myself three times on the show, this dude does more stuff in three years. It's, it's unbelievable. It's like every time I, you turn around, Chris Ducker's got some new thing that he's just crushing out on the, out on the, out in the world. How does this happen? Well, you know, you say that, but it's quite amusing because hang on, I'm gonna I can hear myself. I'm going to take this one out. Um, you, you say that, but it's, it is, it's, for me, it's quite amusing when I hear that because I'm like super calculated. So even when the book came out last April, I knew that, you know, we were going to be launching a community of some variety in 2015. I wasn't quite sure when we were going to be doing it. So I kind of, I, I'd like to say that, you know, we have calendars, you know, booked out years and years in advance. It's not like that. Either that or, or obviously I should just talk to you more often because you keep me busy. One or the other. I don't know. <laughs> It's one or the other, man. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's always a pleasure to chat with you, especially around, you know, doing anything new and, and you know, what I'm focusing on. Because as you know, I'm very focused as an entrepreneur. When I, uh, you know, when I make these changes, I do them for the right reasons, not just to be able to make money, obviously. Well, you're teasing some of the things that I ultimately want to chat about when we, uh, when we start to get going here. It, cool. It, it, so my first question, and, and I'm going to let anybody, anybody who doesn't know – um, the Chris Ducker. I'm just going to put a link to his about page in the comments and you can go check him out. So we're not going to do the whole 10 minutes of backstory on you because one, I already know it and it's my show and I don't want to hear it again. Uh, yeah, you, you don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you call it. It's like, we're not going to do it. It's my show and I don't want to hear it. So <laughs> done. That's well, we're, we're providing, you know, anybody that wants to, chrisducker.com forward slash about, awesome about page. So uh, you'll learn everything you need to know. I want the, My first question that I wanted to ask you about is actually something that, uh, so, you know, you kind of know the format of the show here. We just talk about basically uh, whatever's going on. Um, inbound 2015 and content marketing world going on in the same week, right? I'm having serious, serious FOMO, right? Because I'm not there. Right. And... My, you know, I set a personal goal for myself to start breaking into the marketing world as a speaker, right? I've spoken in, in industries for six, seven years, but there's this whole other world uh, of marketers. Uh, you have strategically, step by step, you know, kind of broken into this world, done it in a way that didn't seem, I mean, it, it didn't seem serendipitous, right? It seemed like you worked on things, you got better at specific skills, you push yourself in certain areas. You can see it in the way that you operate. Uh, how do you maintain the push to get from, you know, one place to the next? Because when I think of you as an entrepreneur, that's the thing that immediately jumps out to me is Chris it's like sets himself to take the steps necessary where a lot of people start things and don't finish them or get, you know, squirrel syndrome. How do you stay focused on the task to get to where you want to be? It's a very simple formula and it, i think it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with because of squirrel or shiny object syndrome or whatever you want to call it and that is we want we have the inclinations to want to work on a lot of different things all at once plain simple um but i don't <laughs> that's really that's that's the magic formula right there man it's 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 about not overextending yourself it's about you know focusing on one thing at a time and making sure that when you do something, you do it right. A, you do it for the right reasons. B, you make sure that you're providing some kind of value. Because if you provide value in business, then you're already ahead of the curve at 80% of the bullshit companies that are out there. Any, can I say bullshit on your show? Oh, I've just said it twice. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I just said it twice. So there you go. But I, I honestly, I feel like... Um, you know, I, I truly feel like that right there is the secret source. It's working on one thing at a time to completion, not working on two or three different things all at the same time, but working on one thing at a time all the way through to completion and then thinking about the next project after you've taken a little bit of time off and, you know, that sort of type of thing. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't get 100 ideas every day. Of course I do. I'm an entrepreneur. But the difference is some people try and act on them all. 
and some people don't. I'm with the latter, obviously, and that's why I believe I can put things out with a certain amount of regularness about them. Um, and, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm, you know, I'm lucky to, to hit it, you know, rather than miss, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. How do you choose? Okay, so that makes sense to me. Um, one thing at a time. Uh, how do you choose which is the next project? So when you're, so you have a hundred ideas and um, you see that there is a space for maybe a new idea like this community or before that the book. And um, you say that, you know, you don't just plan out the next 10 years of your life. So when you're evaluating the different ideas that are floating around in your brain, how do you choose what that next project will be? Well, the one thing I always do is I talk. I talk to my to my peers, to my to the people that I have relationships with, um, about the ideas. I mean, a lot of the things that I have, you know, up here, um, they'll they'll be put down on paper, and or index cards. I use index cards a lot for taking notes on ideas and things like that. And I will I'll get to the point of sort of just getting them out of my head. But those ideas that really stick with me. That's when I start talking to my peers and my colleagues and, you know, people that I know, love and trust. And so, you know, that's the first thing I do is I start talking to my to my friends and the people that I trust and I get feedback from them. And then I start talking to those those super fans in my audience, you know, people that will read, listen and watch everything I create, share it, buy everything I put out, the whole kit and caboodle, because they believe in me. But they believe in my vision. They believe in what I'm all about and therefore they resonate. And so um, I'll talk to those super fans. And I'm lucky, truly lucky, to have a community of, of, of followers from all around the world. I'm not one country centric like a lot of people are. Um, so I have, I have people all around the world. So I get a lot of different views from a lot of different communities and backgrounds and you know, mindsets and all the rest of it. And then I can start sort of juggling things together and see exactly what will work or not. But I do want to clarify that, you know, there is a certain amount of strategicness involved as well, because, you know, three years ago when I launched ChrisDucker.com, which was my 100% focus on my personal brand online anyway, um, that was very clearly because I wanted to build the business of me. I wanted to build that following. I wanted to build that community and all the rest of it. Um, I wanted to catapult my speaking. I've been speaking seven, eight years, but I really wanted to catapult it to the next level. Um, and, you know, having a personal brand certainly helps with that. Um, and, you know, then, you know, you fast forward a couple of years later, the book comes out. You know, I wanted to put that book together because I was sick and tired of the BS that was on the internet about outsourcing and virtual assistants all the time. There was so much crap out there uh, and I just had enough of it. And so I started talking with my friends and the people that I trust. And they said, dude, you, you know, you're more qualified than anybody to write the damn book, just write it. And so, you know, we, we write virtual freedom. We get it out there. I say, we, me and my team, we get it out there into the world. It becomes a bestseller. We're at almost 40,000 copies sold now, which is insane. Um, and, you know, every day, it seems like every day I get a tweet or an Amazon review or an email from somebody that says, this book has helped me, this book has changed my life, this blah, 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 blah. So then from that, now I start seeing the last couple of years or really the last 18 years, I start, uh, last 18 months rather, I start seeing loneliness coming up a lot in the community that I've already been blessed with listening to people talk about building their businesses, particularly online businesses, meeting people at live events when I speak, book signings and all the rest of it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, we are a bunch of lonely souls in the online business world. We truly are. And so I sat down about a year ago. Actually, I can tell you exactly when it was. It was July 4, 2014. And it was Independence Day. I was in the United States. I was hanging out at my buddy Pat Flynn's house with our families. Um, we got into a water balloon fight outside in the back garden. And I threw a balloon in his wife's face and he recorded it. Um, so there's video evidence of that. And and I, I am, when look, when we're talking water balloon fights, it's take no prisoners. Okay. I don't care if you're a mother. Of you're a headhunter. Like yeah. You go yeah. But I, I will clarify. She got me back proper. <laughs> She really got me back. Um, but um, yeah, but that night, the kids, you know, the sugar rushes started to calm down. The kids were relaxing and everything. And me and Pat were having a coffee in his home office. 
And we started talking about what our next plans were. He was talking about his stuff, and I can see that happening now from his end. I w and I was talking about, like, you know, I'm going to calm down a little bit. I'm not going to do so much traveling. I'm going to focus. I, I want to build something big. I want to. I don't want to just do a product or, or another service. You know, mm -hmm. I have several service-related businesses. So I want to build something big, something that will grow over a period of time and genuinely affect mindset shifts for those that get involved with it, genuinely. And so we started talking, and then by the end of that, that evening, the idea for Youpreneur was born. And uh, so if it doesn't work out, I'll just blame him. <laughs> so, you know, so you talked about – so I, I, that's probably a good way. So just that'll be – I'm going to change the title of the show to Chris Ducker Just Blames Pat Flynn for Youpreneur. Yeah, uh, you no, can do that. It – you, you you brought up the idea of loneliness and um, this construction ish zone that you see behind me is actually building my own uh, I call it a creation station in my basement right so basically this is my new workspace I got a huge nice. basement and um, and uh, but what I found is by working in my home I have felt now tools like Blab make it make it easier and and other tools where you're able to connect and see people but there is a level of loneliness to, to to being an entrepreneur especially in the digital world because you are kind of isolated to your computer do you think it's the lack of physical connection you know just seeing people like at a conference or what are some of the elements that are going into this loneliness um, beyond just kind of the the full-blown work that a lot of people put into this thing you know you bring up some great points i think um I think it's number one that we are spread out, aren't we? You know what I mean? Like we work at home or we work at coffee shops or we work alone 90% of the time on our creations, on our marketing ideas and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I've been blessed to be able to build up a good team over the years of people. Um, but even then, at the end of the day, it always comes down to me. And I'm well aware of that. And that, you know, that is part of that youpreneur mindset is to accept responsibility for the overall success or failure of your business. Um, but I think the other the other thing is that I also think that because it's online, you know, we're talking about online businesses here. So because it's online, I think a lot of us are actually quite cagey with letting people know what we're working on, when we're working on it, uh, with the fear that they might potentially rip off our idea or launch the product before we do, whatever the case may be. And I'll tell you something right now, I've had it happen to me. I've had it happen to me on several occasions mm -hmm. where I have spoken with people that I believed I could trust. And then, you know, like two weeks later, they're, they're launching something that's in complete, you know, complete competitiveness compared to something I was going to launch four weeks down the line or something. It's happened to me a number of times. So, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's it's the fact that the majority of the stuff that we do is at an arm's length and that we are ultimately working on our own. But I think, you know, we're quite caged with and, and we're quite, um, you know, reserved in, in or, or we're becoming more and more reserved in talking about our ideas um, with people that we don't really trust or maybe people that, um, you know, that like mindedness isn't really there. We might think it's there but it's not really there. Yeah. Um, maybe you just met briefly at a conference or whatever it is. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's where the loneliness stems from, man. But I mean, it's not just that, you know, being, being a business owner is lonely. It, it's a lonely, you know, that journey of building a successful business is a lonely journey, journey for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to cure it. I'm going to try and cure that, that entrepreneurial loneliness a little bit. Do, do you think a part of it is, in our, what part of it plays the fact that you make the decisions and the result of those decisions fall on you, right? I know since uh, I took over, I'm now an executive at a, at a startup, uh, head of the marketing department, and, you know, all the efforts for all of our marketing fall on my shoulders. So it is a lonely position to be in when Buck stops with you. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, part of it is the idea that, like, if I push this thing out there, there's nobody else who can take responsibility for it. it's, you know, and I think what people worry about is failure, but I think it, as much failure as success, right? Like either way, it's all on me. And a lot of times your spouse doesn't understand 
your friends who aren't doing the same exact thing that you're doing don't understand. You know, I have a lot of buddies. Um, the, the vast majority of my friends who weren't my friends before I went online, uh -huh. they don't have any clue about what I'm doing, right? They see the videos and like, oh, that's cool, but they don't understand the the building a brand and trying to help people and the whole business side of it. And that's right. a that's a tough thing to explain to people if they're if they're not with you in that mindset. Exactly. Yeah, I, I hundred percent agree with you. Hundred percent. Um, so that's how I know when I ask a bad question when the guest responds to me with a hundred percent. That's it. <laughs> That, was hey, that wasn't really a question. You, that was a statement. You were making a yeah, statement. That was a statement. That Don't was, let me bust your balls. I'll do it on the one show. <laughs> I'm bad interviewing when your guest says, yes, I agree 100%. That's, that's actually, like, if they were playing Press Your Luck, like, I just got the whammy button right there. Like, and the little thing. I love it. Across the screen. Oh, uh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... You know, I, so I'm thinking about this idea of loneliness and and your new community. So I shared the link out uh, in the comments. I will again as we go through a couple times so everyone can see it. Um, you have this new community out called Youpreneur, and I've had a chance to poke around, and I appreciate you giving me some early access to that. It's been it's been great and seeing some of the stuff you're doing. Um, you know, give me the and I watched a bunch of the videos and and uh, you know it's I'm listening to them and it was it's very much like you're speaking directly to me. So I have a feeling that many of the people who are in the comments, I know many of them will get the same feeling. So what is the concept of the youpreneur? Like it makes the, the name obviously is very snappy. You immediately connect to it, but um, give me the boil down of like that, the, the five minute video that you have on the top, because that is fantastic. I watched the whole thing twice. It is a really, really knockdown thing with, with just, the, the dial into this idea and, and kind of who exactly you're trying to speak to. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, okay. I mean, look, look a youpreneur is ultimately somebody that is wanting to build a business around them, their personality, their experiences, their stories, their mindset, their preaching, whatever it is. It's perfect for people like bloggers, podcasters, speakers, authors, you know, coaches, those kind of people. And, and it really comes down to accepting responsibility. You know, there's zero excuses allowed in the, in, in the community, zero, you know, negativity allowed in the community. Uh, I literally just threw somebody out of the community yesterday. I just banned somebody. Um, yes, I refunded him his money and, and, and turned off his access because he was becoming very negative, not just in general, but to actually specific people. Um, so he's gone, you know, it's, it's all about creating a community of like-minded people that truly want to affect change and build a business so they can very, very be, you know, honestly, they can be extremely proud of, uh, I'm proud of the businesses that I have built up. I have been an entrepreneur for 12 years. I've made a lot of mistakes in that time, but I've also had several wins and successes as well. And I'm honestly, I know what it takes to build a real business, a business that actually makes real money, okay? Not a grand or two a month, but real money and that you can truly be proud of and something that can be built around you and what you stand for as the owner, as the the head honcho of that business. And that's what being a youpreneur is all about. Yeah. Before we go farther down youpreneur, I, I had something hit me while you were talking and, and I'd like you to kind of touch on this. Um, this isn't the only community speaking to entrepreneurs. One of the things you just said at the end of, uh, uh, of your response uh, really hit home for me because it's one of my hot button issues, right? I, I like to believe that though, you know, wherever I end up in the spectrum of trying to help people, the advice that I give them is stuff that I've done, right? Like I've either helped someone directly or done it myself using these things, these ideas, these concepts to, to turn an actual revenue. How yeah. do... How do the people who are evaluating various communities, how do you, how do you find, how do you pick or sense the, the pretender, right? So there's a lot of people throwing a lot of advice around. And when you get past that, the top level, you know that they've never really done it. They've listened to every one of Chris Ducker's podcasts and they're just regurgitating some ideas that they've heard a bunch of times over and over again. Yeah. How do people pick out the, the people who really care and have done it and can help them versus the ones that, um, 
you know, are just kind of spewing the same ideas? You know, I think, you know, you, I think before you, you, you spend any money with anybody today, you're going to have to get to know them, right? You know, you've heard my concept of that P2P or people to people concept that I talk about. Um, yeah, I think I big... stole that from you. Yeah, big time. I steal that all the time. I love it. Go ahead, steal <laughs> it. Um, we all know where it came from, um, <laughs> right? Here. No, I, I'm, I'm all about. Honestly, I'm all about that. I'm all about that. And you know, the very large majority of the people that are already inside of Youpreneur, uh, I have had some kind of communication with, either via Twitter or via Periscope. Periscope has been a big game changer for me in my personal Duckerscope. brand building. Um, Duckerscope, yeah. Hashtag Duckerscope. That's a thing. Um, oh, we got Joyce now. Now, Joyce now isn't, isn't an early member of Youpreneur. So she's like, I'm loving Youpreneur community so far and feel that I, I, uh, I've been your perfect customer avatar while creating this. There you go. And she's 100% right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I know where I know Joyce now is in India. I know that, you know, she's focusing on building a business right now. That's that P2P philosophy right there that I'm all about. Um, you are way more likely to do business with somebody that you know, love and trust. And notice how I say love and trust, not like and trust there. Um, then you are somebody that you've just stumbled over on a hashtag randomly via Twitter. Fact, right? Um, either that or you're way more likely to do business with somebody that you know is already doing business with rather than a complete stranger. So I think you're right. You know, there's a lot of you know membership communities out there for entrepreneurs and people that want to build businesses. Um, and people will obviously make their choices. But, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to the person behind the community or at least the team behind the community. And I think, you know, their, you know, their checkable, you know, history. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, you can't, you can't sort of just stumble over me. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm out there. I've been very active for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, the chances are if you're if you are going to find me in some way, shape or form, it's going to be through a referral from somebody else or mm. through a piece of content that has been created to genuinely solve one specific problem that you're experiencing or whatever the case may be. You know, it's it's you're not you're not just going to stumble over me. You're not. Yeah. You're going to you're going to be presented to me in some way. Um, that is not, you know, strategic to the point where I'm looking for a switch and bait or, any, or rather a bait and switch or anything. But what I'm saying is that, you know, the large majority of the people I do business with across the board come to me because of my track record in some way, shape or form. And it's a track record that has, you know, high, you know, I currently have over 400 people working for me in a real business, you know, a, a, an actual building three floors in a building, um, three different businesses, you know, and so on and so on and so on. I'm not going to turn it into a, a self pitch fest, but I'm a trackable, checkable guy. And I think people appreciate that, quite frankly. I think they do too. I think when you launched your uh, original, the Chris Ducker brand, I think a big part of what made that so sticky so fast was that there was this real success behind it. I mean, you got the video with you and the suspenders and the tie to prove it, right? Like you've been doing it for a while and, <laughs> and you made it so through that marketing video. So you must be successful. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, that marketing video actually was so successful for us that we had three different competitors rip it off completely and post it up on, on um, YouTube with their own telephone numbers and all that sort of stuff. And whenever you had, whenever the word, you know, lift to sell, cause that was the name of the company lift to sell would come up on the screen or it would be spoken. Music would come over it or something else would happen from a, from a, you know, from a editing perspective. But yeah, I mean, I mean, YouTube are great taking it down every time with the whole copyright thing. But um, yeah, it was a very successful video all down to the suspenders, <laughs> all down to those. Um, so do you think that someone can work inside a company and still be a youpreneur? I'm not talking about side hustlers. I'm talking about the methodology and the mindset. Can you mm -hmm. take that? Can you be a youpreneur, but be inside another organization? Absolutely. You know, that's just called being a good employee in my mind. You know, a youpreneur for me is somebody who will put their heart on their sleeve. They're in it to win it. They get knocked down. They stand back right up again. They, uh, you know, they understand that they've got to work hard, that it's not going to just drop into your lap. Uh, and I'm not going to get into the whole hustle mentality. I love Gary. 
uh, but I think he, he he overdoes that a little bit, and that's his life. And I'm all about building a business in a smart way, maximum output, with not necessarily minimal effort, but knowing when is the right time to turn it on and chase it down, as I say, or yeah. not. Um, and uh, no, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're an employee still or whether you genuinely are, you know, starting to build your own business. At the end, at the very end of the day, it's a mindset. It's a mindset is exactly what it is. Uh, and if you want to, you know, engage in that mindset and take that on board, then you can do it. If you don't, then no big deal. Chances are you might lose your job in the future. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, it, it, it's a really interesting thing. You know, this is something that I uh, am constantly struggling with in my own work, right? Like I work for this large organization and I love the work. It allows me to play at a very high level and, and, uh, and I enjoy it. I really do enjoy it. At the same time, I'm constantly struggling with the concept of or the idea that somewhere in there, my personal brand could get lost. And you're so good at personal branding. I would love to get your thoughts because I know this is something that a lot of people deal with, right? Like, I, I think the, this, so this is my little soapbox. I feel like the- Do it, it's your show, remember? Right, it's my show. I can jump up on my soapbox whenever I want. Uh, so I feel like the idea that everybody hates working for the man or big corporation is a completely overblown blown BS idea that, you know, I just think it's been it's been like lifestyle entrepreneur into the idea that that somehow working for a larger company is a bad thing. And I can't say that I'm always going to want to work for for a larger company that I don't own. But today I'm I'm pretty happy doing some really incredible work and, and help. Sure. So, you know, I, I think that the, the I love what you brought up about hustle. Right. I think hard work is important, but working hard work doesn't mean working all day. You know, no. when I know that you recently, and I, and I saw this again in your video, but I've heard you say it a couple of times, you stopped working Fridays or have constantly just been more, more importantly, constantly been adjusting your work levels to where you can spend the optimal amount of time with your family and friends while still being able to produce. What are some, uh, some advice that you could give to people about just optimizing your work levels, keep staying focused and doing that hard work when it's time to do it, but still being able to enjoy your life a little bit? Because uh, not everybody enjoys working 20 hours a day. Gary does. Right. It's amazing right. for him. But not everyone needs to own a, a, a marketing agency or an advertising agency with 300 people to be to feel like their life is successful. Exactly. I agree 100%. I mean, you know, success, let's not beat around the bush. I mean, it's a word that gets thrown around a lot. Okay. I believe that society has led us to believe that success equals working 20 hours a day. And I just don't agree. I don't agree with that in any way, shape or form. I, I call BS on that. Um, you know, for me, you know, the true, the real true value of success is freedom. That's honestly what that is. Now, I'm not saying location independence or anything like that. I'm a realist. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I need a base. I'm not traveling around the world with my kids, you know, and all that sort of stuff. It is what it is. Um, but I believe, you know, when I say freedom, what I mean is freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it, and where you want to do it. So if that means that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in London right now, but obviously, you know, I live in the Philippines, but I'm in London right now. I'm going to do three speaking gigs in the next eight days all over this country, and then I'm flying back to the Philippines. I got three weeks there. And then I'm over to the U.S. where I'm doing four speaking gigs in a four week period all over the U.S. So, you know, I got the freedom to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Content marketing world you mentioned earlier on. I was there last year uh, speaking. So, I mean, you know, that's the freedom to like there. The reason why I don't work Fridays is because I, I genuinely want real hardcore downtime once a week. Let me explain what I mean by that. And any parents watching this right now, they'll get this completely, okay? You don't have downtime on the weekend if you're a parent. You don't. There's parties to go. There's birthday parties to go to, soccer practice, karate class, whatever the hell it is. You don't have downtime on the weekend. So when I don't work on the Fridays, when my kids are at school, what do you think I'm doing on Friday? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm either hanging out at a beach resort with my wife for the day, or we're hitting a double bill at the mall in the cinema, or we're messing around at the yoga studio for a few hours and then going to grab, 
you know, frozen yogurt after this, the stuff that you can't do at any other time on the weekend. So that's the reason why I have really that, that Friday is my down. That's my real true downtime. Now I want to clarify, do I check my email in the morning on Friday? Yes, of course I do. I'm on it for 30 minutes, making sure there's nothing urgent there. It's still a business day for the rest of the world. I get it. But for me, no calls, no meetings, no visitors, nothing scheduled. When that little bit of time in the morning is done with my early morning cup of joe, I'm out and I'm having fun and doing what I'm doing. But Monday to Thursday, I'm on. You know, my schedule is what it is. I have a phrase that says, you know, if it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. So I schedule everything through Monday, Monday to Thursday. So yeah, 30 minutes for email, boom. 15 minutes for Twitter, boom. An hour for a blog post, boom. Whatever it is, it all goes on the schedule. So I work six, seven hours a day, Monday through Thursday, and then I don't work for the rest of the week. One of the words that you use quite a bit that I feel very connected to, and it's one of the reasons that I've brought you back on the show as often as I have, is responsibility. You've used it a dozen times during the course of the show. And mm. what I, you know, if I could kind of roll up my ideas from, from what we've heard to this point in the show, it's, it's, you feel a responsibility to your business, to yourself, to your family. Where does that come from? Where does that concept of, of responsibility come from? Cause it's a, it's something I talk a lot about in my own book was you have a responsibility to your audience as a creator, you have a response, you know what I mean? So w- why is that concept so important to you and where did that come from? Well, you know, it started from my father, you know, I, I saw my dad, my father was a very, very um, well accomplished architect here. We've got a helicopter. Can you hear the helicopter? Right, there's a helicopter. They found me. They've located me. I thought coming there's to London. Spotlight searching them off the my ground track. right now. Um, <laughs> there's some guy abseiling down the side of the house. Um, no, I uh, I got it from my dad initially. He was a very well accomplished um, architect here in London. If you look at the London skyline in any sort of movie that's filmed. Uh, you know, he probably had his hand in half of those buildings in some way, shape or form. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I used to hear him talking about it. You know, he was a head draftsman um, and uh, I would hear him talking about it all the time. You know, my responsibility is to do this. It's our responsibility to build like this. It's, you know, Bubba. and I, I used to hear that word a lot growing up. But I think it also, you know, not only from a from a kind of an early influencer type status for my father to give me that. But I also, you know, I, I have a very, very high expectations of myself. Whenever I do anything, I set the bar very, very high for myself. Um, and, you know, ultimately that means that, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to hit that success button that, you know, it's going to be above and beyond what I would normally be able to get if I didn't set those highs, you know, setting high expectations helps us. It helps us become better at what we do. So I hate it when I see people, you know, setting expectations here when they should be set up here. Now, even if you don't hit them, if you're somewhere in between those two points right there, you're still doing better than what you would have done in the first place. Right. So that's, that's my whole thing. But for me, responsibility is, is also part of reputation. It's part of my brand. You know, your brand is what people say about you when you're not around and so, you know, for me, I think about how I want people to talk about me when I'm not around. Uh, I understand that, you know, sometimes I can become a little rough around the edges. Uh, I'll tell you how it is. What you see is what you get. There's no BS with me. I'm too busy for BS, as I say. And um, for me, it's it really comes down to, you know, giving people, you know, frank feedback and ideas and, and motivation. Um, and if you don't like it, I'm totally fine with that. You can go and find it somewhere else. But if you do like my vibe, then I want you as part of my tribe. That's a tweetable. Plus, you have that very authoritative British accent, which yeah. makes everyone think that what you're saying is true, even if it's complete bullshit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. See, us exactly Americans, we don't have that. So good. Everyone no. in the world just thinks that we're stupid because of the way that oh, we yeah. talk. They're just like Americans, the way they sound dumb. British people could be saying the exact same thing. And it's like, he's a genius. He, that guy right. is a genius right there. Right, right, right. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's amusing. You know, I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of speaking in America. The vast majority of my speaking has been in the United States. And I, I love speaking in America because, um, you know, 
if in doubt, if a, if a joke falls flat, there's always something with the British accent that you can do to unflatten the joke. Or, or, or if a point that you're making isn't quite hitting home, um, you know, you throw in a bloody or, or, or you know, an ass or something like it. You said one a very British word. You throw that in, it'll, it'll move you on nicely to the next point. I don't know. <laughs> It's just one of those things, you know, I, I never forget I, I, some of the situations I've had around my British accent in America. I can't even talk about on the Internet, uh, particularly as a married man. Now, I just, it wouldn't be worth it. It's ridiculous. Some of the stuff I've encountered. It's crazy. One of the commenters just said that we have to hear your New York accent. Being from New York, I would love to hear this. My new. Oh, OK. All right. Oh, God. OK. This is Joycener. Joycener, thank you so much for doing this because he's from New York. Okay, so I don't do like a hardcore, you know, I'm not like the hardcore. Well, you don't have to give us a preface. Just rock your, I just want to. No, wanna... I just want to clarify. You know, I'm, I'm, I kind of do more of the kind of, you know, the good fella De Niro. This is American a British Italian guy doing a New, New York accent. I got it. Yeah. So it always, it has to start. And I, you better be giving me, what, what do they call these on, on, things when you have to tap the high fives right you gotta give me me whatever it is yeah so you know it usually starts with something along the lines of oh are you doing over there oh (laughs) well what did i say what did i say what are you what are you a wise guy over here what forget about it what are you doing over here oh the The joe pesci and all that stuff yeah did you you know that the whole kind of hey you you you're good you're good yes you yes you are you're good Little bit, little bit, you know, all that kind of shit. I do the whole De Niro thing. I like, I'm a big fan of Bobby De Niro. So that's, that's my New York impression. Right? The funny part is, the funny part about that is that it's not. What just am I, a clown? I'm here to amuse you? Like I'm a clown? I got a buddy from Alabama who starts every, every time I call him, he starts it with, hey, you rolling some dice and cooking some pizzas up there. And I'm like, you're from Alabama. You should know right. that. I'm not even from, I'm like three hours away from up from New York City. And that's not it. how everyone talks now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of fun with the whole accent thing. And, you know, on Periscope, I do a lot of different accents and all the rest of it. And I just have fun with it, man. You know, like I said, you know, that's part of the brand. That's part of that Youpreneur mindset is, is to just be yourself all the time. Uh, you know, I, I talk about it like marketing, like a magnet where, you know, you, you, rep- you, you know, you, you attract the best and you repel the rest, right? So you market like a magnet. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the whole deal is to get the right people around you, the people that get you, people that are excited about spending time with you. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the crux of our whole conversation. And uh, what I want to do is we're, we're about 40 minutes in. What I'd like to do is for just a few minutes, open up the seat, have anyone who wants to come in and, and have a chat, ask a question. I ask only that people... Uh, kind of come in, introduce yourself, ask your question. Um, you know, this isn't soapbox time. This is my show. I get to do the soapboxes. Ask Love a it. question. Chris is here for you. And um, so I'll open it up uh, and see if there's anybody who wants to come in. So the seat is now open. And the first thing you got to do, though, if 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 we're going to say if Ryan approves you, the first thing you got to do is say, "Hey, how you doing over there?" And give us give us your best. Your best, whatever you consider a New York accent. Or wanna... British accent. Or British accent. Or Let's British. Yeah, you can do British too. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see. Maybe no one will yeah. come in. Yeah. Uh, maybe you just killed it. Um, so l- while we're waiting for someone to jump in, I'm going to ask you this question. <clears throat> you know, one, we talked, you, you mentioned Gary Vee with the hustle thing. One of the things that he, another point that he makes a lot that I actually think is, uh, is very powerful is this do things that don't scale. Where do you kind of stand on that? So send the email, do the video response in Twitter, you know, uh, shake the hand, do the thing that you can't do 10,000 times because that one connection built in that powerful way can lead to many more than if you build a lot of weaker. So one, what is your stance on that? And then maybe how do you do that? I agree with it. hundred percent. I agree with it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all about building businesses and all the rest of it. Don't get me wrong, but you know, that, that just goes back perfectly to the, you know, the, the P2P philosophy is, is doing those, uh, you know, those Twitter video replies and shaking hands and spending time for people. I remember many, many years ago, I did a presentation at an event in LA 
And I don't know why exactly, but when I was done with my keynote, I came off stage and there was a few, you know, there's always people that want to say hi and, you know, ask a quick question or just give you a high five or whatever it was. And my wife was there with me <clears throat> and she was off to one side and she was kind of, you know, uh, uh, looking at what I was doing and all the rest of it. And I remember her telling me afterwards, she said, you looked really preoccupied greeting those people. Like you weren't focusing on the person that was talking to you. You were looking around, you were doing this, that, and the other. And when she said she really pulled me up on that and I, I, it scared the living crap out of me. So I'm very, very, yeah. you know, solid on that sort of stuff. Hi, Joyce. Nah. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Hi, Ryan. It's, it's um, so nice to see you in. In, in other than just your avatar form. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, many people who see my avatar cannot recognize me, you know, because that was taken by a professional photographer. So <laughs> without makeup, oh. this is how I look. <laughs> also, I thought you woke up in the morning like that. Every morning you wake up like that, surely. <laughs> Roll out of bed. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so I just hired a... you lots of props. Thank boom, you. Boom. Thank you so much, Chris. Good work. So, uh, Ryan, uh, to introduce myself, I run a Kindle publishing business. Uh, I've been publishing books on Amazon for a while using outsourced writers. So that was my first uh, online business. And a few months back, I wrote my first book called Job Escape Plan. And that went on to hit the bestseller charts on Amazon. So uh, right now I have... Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, right now, along with my podcaster friend, Ani Alexander, we have started... a book publishing service called Publish My Book Today, where we help authors with services like book covers, editing, formatting, and all of that. Basically, those who don't know the whole process and who want to outsource it to uh, professionals, we take care of that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm doing now. I so love, today, because uh, we're talking- I, I've been on her show before her podcast. Oh, she does a great is job. Is it? Yeah, yeah, she's awesome, right? <laughs> Yeah, so today we were talking about this whole community thing. So my question to you, Chris, is that after I wrote my book, I have started to build a kind of following, uh, but it's nowhere close to you know, your kind of following. I have a small tribe on Facebook. We have a tiny little Facebook group and we are growing it. So I just want to know when would be the right time or how do I grow this Facebook group into a bigger community and provide lots of value to them? I am in the process of creating an online course for stay-at-home moms who want to launch an online business by publishing a book and stuff like that. But my question is, uh, when do I know that I'm ready to actually launch a community like yours? It's a really, really good question. Um, and I will start by saying that, you know, the overnight success for me took 12 years. So, you know, I want to clarify that right there. This is not yeah. something that you can just, you know, click your fingers and or click your heels like Dorothy and everything's going to be perfect. Um, you know, for me, what's more important, and I've really seen a shift, and Ryan, you'll appreciate this as well, because, you know, we've known each other for a few years now. The people that were following me three years ago, the large majority of those people are no longer following me. Um, I've, I've changed in my mindset, you know, when I first got active online, I was all about virtual assistance and outsourcing and delegation. And I'm still all about that. Don't get me wrong, but I don't talk about it 100% of the time. Now I'm talking about it 25% of the time. So, you know, and, and that's because, you know, quite frankly, to be very honest with you, I got bored talking about it all the damn time, plain simple. You know, there's a lot more we can discuss and talk about when you're building a business. So, my, my following has evolved and grown, I think, as I have evolved and grown as an online business owner. Even though I've, known, I've owned businesses offline for close to a decade, you know, I'm still a newbie with the whole online business thing. It's, it's five and a half years. It's relatively new. So my advice to you would be to just continue to try and attract the right people into your current community. And if it's a Facebook mm -hmm. group, great. If it's something else, whatever. Uh, but but mm -hmm. continue to focus in on, on attracting the right kind of people, not just necessarily a thousand new people every month or whatever you, you, know, you might wanna get, but you know, yeah. the right people, the right people. I'd rather have a thousand people opening every email that I send, mm -hmm. retweeting every tweet that I post, you know, doing all those things. I'd rather have a thousand people doing that then 100,000 mm -hmm. people on my mailing list, it's never going to you know, want to hear from me. 
So just focus right. on the focus on the right people rather than growing it. Yeah. Uh, so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So actually I shouldn't be chasing the numbers, but rather I should look at the quality of the people who are following me. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, inside of Youpreneur right now, as you know, you know, we have around about 170 members that have that have joined in the last what week and a half since we launched. Um, mm -hmm. Some people might say that that's a small number. Some people might say that's a big number. For me, it's the perfect number because everybody in that group, bar one person that I banned last night, um, everybody. <laughs> Get out of my group. You're not in my group, you know. But 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 everybody in there, as you well know, you you're in the forums, you can see how connected people are already, and that mindset is there. Right. We're attracting the right people, and that for me is the most important thing. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. So I shouldn't be hurrying into starting a community. I rather provide lots of value up front and then gradually grow my tribe. It'll come, you know, it'll come your way. Anyway, it'll come your way naturally. Mm -hmm. As long as you're providing that value, you're answering those questions, you're creating the solutions to the services and the you know the problems that you want mm -hmm. to try and help people with, that will come. If you want it to come, that's the other thing. You know, yeah. there might be some people that are viewing in right now, and maybe your mindset might change six months from now. Maybe you don't want to build a big community. Maybe you just want to create a great business and make money. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with either of that. Um, you know, for me, I'm at the point in my career now where I was talking to Ryan earlier. I want to do something big, something that will be for the next 10 years plus. Mm -hmm. And for me, I believe Youpreneur is going to be that. And so, you know, I'm not going to be focused on products and services and things like that so much anymore in terms of the growth of new ones. It's for me, it's it's all about the community and making sure that I can, you know, create as best of a community as I possibly can. Great. Sure. Cool. Thank you. I hope that helped. Uh, yes, I'm going to open up the seat. Thanks for the question. It's great to meet you. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, and it looks like we got uh, Wade Harmon's going to come in and ask our next question. Thanks so much. Uh, hey, thanks, Ron. Ryan. Hey, I'm just going to exit so that I leave the seat open for somebody else to join great. in. Right? Thank you. And I really appreciate it. Great question. Great follow-up question. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye Joyce. Nah. Hey, Wade, what's up? Hey, man. It's, it's an honor to talk to you, buddy. I've been following you like everywhere. And, uh, I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, you're involved in collaboration with some great, really great guys. One, one, one guy is Pat Flynn, one of my personal heroes, man. I love that guy. And I guess my, my question is, what kind of relationship advice would you give us when, when you're thinking about cultivating relationships um, with colleagues and peers? What kind of tips would you give us for, for doing that, you know, in, in terms of, you know, uh, doing a collaboration of sorts with, with some, you know, someone that's going to, you're going to help them and they're going to help you. How do you, how do you find that? I think, you know, what's really important, <clears throat> and this is something that, you know, even Pat's wife, April has mentioned to my wife when they've been hanging out, um, is that, you know, the reason why April likes the relationship that Pat and I have so much is because I don't sugarcoat anything. I tell him exactly how it is. You know, if he's doing something right, I'll give him that a high five. If I think he should be doing something differently, sure as hell, I'll let him know in my own special little way. Um, and I think that is, you know, that resonates with her. And, you know, our wives are very important parts of our of our lives, obviously, the two of us. So we listen to our wives. Um, otherwise, we get into trouble if we don't. Um, so, you know, it, it, it really, I think really what it comes down to, honestly, is being you is being you and what you're all about. You know, a lot of people look at people like Pat or myself or any other influencer online and say, oh, I'd love to be able to, you know, build a relationship with them or get close to them or whatever the case may be. And they do things, they say things and they act in a certain way. So maybe that starts to happen. But sooner or later, you'll drop the ball and the BS will be will, will be splattered everywhere. They'll, trust us, we see it from a mile away. And so my advice really is just, just to focus on, you know, building the right kind of relationships with the right people rather than relationships for the sake of having that relationship, if that, if, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Can I do a follow-up question before I head out? Rock and roll, man. Oh. Um, since you, since you uh, mentioned that, that there's a lot of people wanting to build relationships with you and, and Pat and, and Ryan as well. I mean, uh, you guys are, are killing it. Um, what do you what do you look for? I mean, what does somebody have to do to get in your circle? 
Well, for me, number one, they've got to be themselves. Um, and I have an extremely sensitive bullshit indicator. I can smell it from a mile away. Uh, I've been blessed with it in my life ever since school days. And, you know, it's helped me a lot in business. I can tell you that right now. I trust my gut above and beyond everything else. You will, al you will almost always regret saying no a lot less than you will do saying the word yes. So, you know, following your gut is huge right there. So that's what I look at first and foremost. Secondly, I look at, you know, are, are you know, is this person actually going to bring something to me as well? And I'm not talking about, you know, give and take, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You promote my book, I'll promote your podcast kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like, are they going to bring genuine value to my life? Like, do I want this person in my life? Because whenever I say, yes to talking and hanging out with somebody i'm saying no to doing exactly the same thing with somebody else like right now with ryan i could be on with anybody but he asked me to come on and i love the guy to death so i'm here um and and actually we tried to set this up last week and i had to cancel on you pretty much last minute and i felt really bad about it because that's a relationship that i have with ryan so in terms of like getting into people's circles and things like that you know you got to put yourself out there you got to make yourself seen, make yourself heard, but in the right way for the right reason. And to genuinely look at provide value, man. That's really what it comes down to is providing that value to somebody and, and really bringing that person into your life. You know, I, I want to talk about one person in particular here who um, the first time I met him, I didn't really think all that much about him. Um, and I'll let you know who this is in a minute. Uh, and, and, and he knows I felt like this before. Like, he seemed like a nice enough guy, but he also seemed very sort of self-centered um, and kind of almost focused on, you know, what he was all about and what he, you know, could get out of certain situations. But over the last three or four years of knowing this person, he's grown up a lot and he's flourished and, and he's become loved and he gives so much love out to other people. And when we're together, I just feel such an amazing connection with this person. And I love spending time with him. He's hung out with my family. He's given my son, Charlie, you know, shoulder rides down Hollywood Boulevard uh, and all these things. And, and this person I'm talking about is Lewis Howes from the School of Greatness. And the first time I met Lewis, I just like, yeah, all right, big, big deal. He's a big, tall guy cool, very handsome, you know, that kind of thing. And, but now I'm very genuinely thankful to have Lewis in my life. And I know he feels the same way about me. So it's, it comes down to value, man. It comes down to following your heart and providing value and wanting to genuinely be there and help people out. I think what, you know, that's what it is for me anyway. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate the question, Wade. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, um, if you don't mind jumping off, we're going to wrap things up, buddy. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Wade. So, Chris, this has been as good as I could have expected it to be. You're obviously very generous with it's your fun. time, and I don't want to take up any more of it. Um, and, uh, you know, you said the thing about us mix, you know, us missing misconnection. It's like, you know, and I, from the other side of that story, right? So you have something come up last minute. Obviously, I was excited to have you on the show uh, just because I enjoy our conversations, but it's like when you have that, I think respect and, and everything for, for the other person, no big deal, right? Hey, we'll just schedule for next week and right. figure out something or whenever it works. And I, it's, it's that human respect that needs to translate into the digital world. And when it does, that's the thing that I think people pick up on and, uh, and really helps. Could not that. agree more. Could not agree more. And, you know, I did a scope um, probably around about a month or so ago now, um, which was really popular. There was, I mean, a couple of thousand people watched this thing in the space of 24 hours. And, and it was about getting back to basics in business and spending more time on and money on customer service and putting yourself out there and following up on your promises and not being a douchebag when somebody asks for a refund on day 29 of a 30 day guarantee, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like I really brought it hard in that scope. And it was very, very successful. A lot of people emailed and tweeted me about it. And I think that is what we're missing. Like we're missing old school business yeah. principles. We're missing picking up the damn phone and talking with each other. We're missing getting back to people in a timely fashion. We're missing, you know, 
handling every single complaint with professionalism, not flying off the handle and, and you know, getting into a tweet war with people. You know, this is business. This is not a pissing contest. This is business. When someone is, is there and they're wanting to become a client or they want to do business with you over and over and over again, I'm telling you now, they demand your goddamn respect. Yeah. I don't care if they're spending 49 bucks a month or 40,000 bucks a month. They demand your respect. And I think truly we need to go back to basics. More and more people need to go back to basics. I was so focused on this that I actually recorded a podcast episode, which comes out next Tuesday, where I, where I really deep dive into all that. So if anybody's watching and they want to check it out, they can check it out next Tuesday. But yeah, I, I'm a big believer of, of, of going back to basics and really just you know doing this thing right. Don't just do it, but do it right, you know? I couldn't agree with you more. It's it, all, everything you read now is the tactics that people tactics that people are talking about are old school relationship like human relationship building techniques and it's like be nice to people, yes. have respect, feel responsibility to the, you know, for the things that you do and say and how you interact and um it just I I think that that is the thing, you know, it's why I hate talking about tactics in marketing is because we skip past these basic fundamental principles that that dictate the tactics. I want to have better customer service. Well, then you need to have a phone number that someone can call to talk to you when they have a problem. Right. There's the tactic, right? right? And um, right. so, hey, man, again, we spend, you know, we, we, we spend way, way, way too much time. Now, you opened up the can of worms here. I'm going to keep going. Oh, go we keep going. Your, your time, <laughs> not mine. So I'm, I'm good. <laughs> we spend we spend way too much time here. In business, and I think even particularly, even more so in the online business, where we're trying to acquire, 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 build the list, build the list, advertise, advertise, opt in, opt in, acquire, acquire, acquire. And we don't spend anywhere near as much time in retaining the people that we've already got on our mailing lists, reading our blogs, listening to our podcast, spending money with us on our shopping cart pages. We don't spend anywhere near as much money. Uh, sorry, anywhere, yeah, actually money as well. We don't spend anywhere near as much money, energy, or time in developing that retention side of our business. We're all about trying to get new business all the time. I, need, I think we need to flip that on our butts, literally, and, and start really focusing in on, on, on you know, caring more you know caring for your customers more I, i'm right with you jen mitch just said uh social is a channel not a replacement for being a human 100 percent. it's i mean that's absolutely that's the deal right it's you, you these should be tools to amplify who you are as a person not not tools to gimmick and scheme and try to feel, like you said it, we're all about accumulation and really accumulation it should be a byproduct of doing incredible work and building incredible relationships and you know, I'm actually completely revamping the way that I handle uh, people who have subscribed to my newsletter. I, I, I looked at what I've done and I said, many, much of what you just said, I said, I am not providing value to these people. I'm pushing out right. content. Right. Or, it's just, it's not what they subscribed you, for. Right. No, exactly. And I, even us with Upreneur, you know, we launched on, we launched literally 10 days ago and, you know, I'm already changing our entire onboarding process because i'm looking at what people are doing and how they're doing it i'm not happy with it i think i could be providing more value to the you know to the member to the brand new member within that first 48 72 hours after they sign up so we're flipping the switch and changing stuff on that as well you know always be looking at things always be innovating always be creating always be helping and supporting and that for me is that's the incubus of putting a community of any kind together right there as all those things rolled into one ladies and gentlemen this has been the chris ducker my absolute pleasure to have you on the show my friend uh check that out i put the link in the comments many times if you're listening to this later or on youtube uh, the link to the youpreneur uh, community will be up there just go and check out chris's site and the way that he talks about his business check out the about page that i put in there um you know I wouldn't have had Chris on this show three times if I didn't have as much respect for him as I do enjoy our conversations and think that uh, the way that he is building out the online entrepreneur, that the example that he's uh, setting is the way that it should be done. I'm a huge opponent to a lot of the lifestyle entrepreneur type stuff. That is not what Chris is talking about. He's talking about building businesses 
in the digital world and, and he just watching him do it. I, I don't mean to stroke you here so hard at the end, but I just am a huge fan and appreciate everything that you do. Uh, anywhere else that someone should go and find you, Chris? Man, you know, right now it's all about youpreneur.com and then obviously my online hub at chrisducker.com. Everything I do is there as well. So if anybody is, is tuning in, they got any questions or whatever, hit me up. Let's have an after party tweet party on Twitter at Chris Ducker. I'm more than happy to hang out a little bit. Cool. Thank you so much, man.